next guest is actually also John Russo, and it's not a typo. We actually have two John Russos in our movement. Um, isn't that amazing? <laughs> what are the odds of that? Okay, and on our panel. And this John Russo is someone that I first met months ago when I first got involved. And my God, this man has come up here from Santa Cruz so many times to educate us that we owe him an unimaginable debt of gratitude because they were the ones, again, as I said when I started, that got sprayed first and have already been grievously harmed. And yet John has come up here time and time again, appearing at countless forums, just to share his knowledge with us. I mean, what an incredible thing that truly is, and we're so grateful. So John is going to be telling us about the impact of the grassroots movement that he actually founded, has had on this effort, his incredible petition site that was at 30,800 today when I looked just before I started. And he's really a visionary because he's gone way beyond the immediate issues to start thinking about what we need to do as a grassroots movement from here. So John, thank you. <laughs> this one is working. How's that? Can you hear me? <laughs> well, thank you, Dorothy, for that uh, that wonderful introduction. Hope I can. Uh, mm -hmm. go back to that. Yeah, it was actually very, um, very exciting for me today to meet uh, the other John Russo. <laughs> I, I still remember when uh, Oakland uh, first got involved, and I started seeing all the emails. Hey, John Russo's responding all over the place. <laughs> We're definitely going to beat him. <laughs> so um, I also want to thank um, you, Dorothy, and. Helen and Tracy and um, everybody from Stop the Spray East Bay for keeping this forum together. Um, I know it's hard to put, a, put an event like this together, especially when the CDFA keeps trying to pull the rug out from under you, you know, but um, we've got an amazing turnout and, um, you know, just as amazing that um, we had this tremendous victory around the aerial spray component of the program. One of the most amazing things to me has been the victory on the human side of all the people, the thousands of people actually, across the state of California that have joined together um, to fight this ter terrible tragedy. Um, I personally believe that we all are right here, right now at this very minute, living essentially what's been called a great awakening. Um, Many folks um, in this room may have been um, advocates working on issues for a long time. Um, one of the interesting things about this issue, because it affects the very air that we breathe and what we depend on for our own human survival, is that it's caused literally thousands of people across the state to become awake, to realize that all of these things that you know, we didn't necessarily agree with all the chemical use, the industry, um, the, the mode of agriculture that, that promotes that. And, you know, we didn't agree with it, but it wasn't in our lives. And it wasn't something that we felt we needed to necessarily stand up right now with a sense of urgency and say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. We're going to put a stop to it right here. We're going to draw a line and we're gonna make them stop. And I think that, you know, we are living this great awakening. And the change, you know, really in our world, because it's our world, it's, it's your world, each and every one of you. It's as much our world as it is their world. And the change to make our world the way we want it to be starts right here in this room, right here with all of you who took time out from your busy lives, everybody's busy, um, to come here today, even though you know a major victory has just been won, to to become informed, to be involved, and to to change the world the way we want it, and to me that's just that's the most heartwarming thing in this whole thing. If you know there, if there's a silver silver lining in all of it, that's it for me. I, I mean, I I have to say, thinking back in October when when I started uh, StopTheSpray.org and um, wrote the petition, I had no idea where this journey was going to take, take me. I, I remember thinking to myself, and now, now it just seems naive looking back, 
You know, I was thinking, oh, just, they just don't know. <laughs> if we could just tell them how ridiculous this is, like, they'll, they'll understand it. <laughs> and, and for us, you know, we had the drumbeat of the press back then, because nobody had really heard of this issue saying, it's safe. It's just a pheromone. There's nothing to worry about. In fact, our press was telling us things like, everybody's for it. <laughs> Nobody's against, there's some lunatic fringe, you know, the, the fringe guys, they're, they're off on the side, but they're unhappy with everything, you know, everybody else is for it. And this was the message that we were hearing, and yet when I went out into the streets and talked to people, nobody was for it. Everyone was, was, was scared to death. Everyone was terrified. They didn't want this thing, and they would all tell me the same thing, but I guess I'm alone. I guess, you know, everybody else seems to think that this is okay. And, and that was the purpose of the petition. The purpose that I had when I first started it was just to show everybody out there that they weren't alone. They had concerns about this program, and others had concerns about this program. And to bring those concerns to the lawmakers and say, look, what you're hearing in the press is not true. The people in the streets are concerned. They don't want this program. They don't want to have to breathe chemicals without their consent. And you know, I had, you know, again, in retrospect, it seems like a naive um, belief that, um, hey, get a couple thousand signatures, <laughs> you know, bring it to our lawmaker, they'll realize, oh my gosh, people really care, <laughs> and then it would all be over. Well, obviously, um, it's been a lot different path. You know, we now, um, as Dorothy just said, crossed 30,000 people all, of, all across the state who are saying no to this program. We're no longer alone. We don't have to feel like we're alone. Um, you know, I just think back to, you know, Steve Lyle's incendiary words down in the, in the Monterey Bay area when he said to the people of Monterey no. and Santa Cruz, the authority lies with the state. You have no vote. A complete attempt to disempower us to tell us that our words don't matter. Well, it may have taken nine months, but I sure hope he's choking on those words. <laughs> yeah. Breakthrough in science? Breakthrough in science? What's the initials for breakthrough in science? B.S. There was no breakthrough in science. You all did this. You all did it. You forced them. You held their head to the grindstone and you made them realize that they can't do this. This is our world. We're going to take this world back and we're going to shape it the way we want. Not the way they want, the way we want. Now I have to say, I think, you know, Frank and, and some of the other words, uh, John and others who have said, you know, we need to keep being vigilant. You know, I have to say, on one hand, I think we should all celebrate. We got a major victory, we pushed them back, we made them choke down those things that they said that they were going to do unto us. I mean, Cal Murrow was saying we had to just tolerate this only a few months ago, and now he's having to tolerate life without spray. <laughs> At the same token, and this is where it gets a little bit sobering, there was no repentance. And, and I don't... It's true what Mike said, Mike Lindbergh and Dorothy uh, quoted him accurately about the concerns for those that were sprayed, who never got an I'm sorry. But even if you just push past sort of the, um, that for a moment, why is no repentance an issue? Why do we care? Well, because I think it demonstrates without them acknowledging the concerns, how do we guarantee they won't do it again? They're trying to, re even though we took their power away from them and made them pull back on the spray, they're still retaining the authority to do it again. And as long as they retain that authority, it's difficult for us to go and live in peace. Exactly. And I don't want to have to live in a world where I have to constantly be looking over my shoulder, wondering when the next plane is going to fly, wondering when they're going to spray us, wondering some, when some guy in a truck is going to spray you know, sneak by my house and squirt some raid out the side of the window or something like that. I don't want to have to live that way. I want to feel comfortable that we've got an agreement. 
I don't want to be breathing your chemicals and you're not going to be spraying them in my face or in the environment, for that matter. And if you look at everything we've said, not necessary, did they come out last week and say this wasn't necessary? No. no. In fact, Sam Farr wrote an op-ed piece in the papers down where we are insisting once again, after taking credit for stopping the spray, but <laughs> insisting once again that this is a voracious predator that's going to devastate the environment of California. We said it's not safe. Did they say, oh, you're right. It wasn't safe. Look, 643 health complaints, that's the tip of the iceberg. You know, we made a huge mistake. This wasn't safe whatsoever and we're going to stop. Did they say that? No. No. They said breakthrough in science. <laughs> we said it wasn't effective. Did they say, oh, you're right, there's thousands of moths. You know, Dr. Harder and all the work that he did, thank you very much for flying down, taking your personal time. Thank you for doing that. Um, now that we see that Australia and New Zealand have lived all these years without having any devastating consequences and that there's so many moths here, um, we're going to give up the program. Did they do that? No. So I think that, you know, because of that, you know, we got to move past the ego of wishing we can hear an apology, but there's, there's a practical manner. We've got to get the agreement that allows us to, to live in peace. We've got to get more information and stop these ground sprays. We've got to understand how what they are going to do is going to impact our environment and make sure that they don't poison us or the birds or the bees. Um, we need to make sure that our farming communities are protected. I think part of the great awakening in this is understanding how our farming communities are impacted. Like Dr. Harder was saying, the quarantine is still in place. It's still imposing huge hardship on our farming community and our nurseries for what? For nothing. It's not a danger. We shouldn't have to. Um, we shouldn't have to do that. And in fact, I want to give you an encouraging word. I was talking with a reporter from the AP. And, you know, we were exchanging some words, and she said to me, um, you know, one of the things that you, that you out there in the Bay Area have been able to do that we couldn't do is organize. And I think if we can teach Central Valley and those people, I think we'll find it's the same thing there that it was in Monterey when they first did it. People there don't like this either. And we have to tell them they're not the only ones that... They stand with tens of thousands of people who also don't like what this is, and we need to help them, and we need to pull them through. And finally, I think we need to continue to, to look at legislative and even ballot measures that basically bring some caution and some sanity back into this. Change the burden of proof. It has to be, you have to prove that it's safe, effective, and necessary. Not put the burden on the people and not the environment.